who's our next partner? Our next partner is actually going to be Tigera. They're going to be talking about network security uh, in, in your Kubernetes cluster. Very cool. Now, as you know that as part of uh, EKS, we created a new CNI plugin, and that CNI plugin is out in the open source. Mm -hmm. But Tigera also has a CNI plugin, but in this case, we're using only the network policy part. Yep. So we're actually using the network policy controller that Kubernetes uh, out of the box supports, and they were one of the first companies to implement it. So, yeah. All right. Take it away, Tigera. Great. Uh, thanks, Arun. Thanks, Chris, for that warm introduction. Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's a very exciting day for us here today at Tigera. We've been working with the EKS team and some of, uh, some of you as our preview customers for more than nine months uh, building some of these technologies. And with the EKS announcement, general availability announcements <coughs> last week, we believe this is going to start a new trend in how you developers will build and host your containers in Kubernetes in AWS. So really looking forward to, um, to working on that. Uh, for those of you who don't know much about Tigera, uh, we by far have the best logo in the Kubernetes eco ecosystem. <laughs> but beyond that, uh, we were founded a couple of years back to solve network security challenges for your modern applications running in modern infrastructure. Um, our flagship project, Project Calico, that we just talked about, is uh, the default standards when it comes to implementing network security for your container-based environments running in Kubernetes. Today, we have, uh, across the globe, thousands of enterprises and developers using our technology to enforce network security for not just their containers, but even their virtual machine-based environments, uh, either in public cloud or on-prem in a hybrid environment. And uh, uh, across these customer base, if you look at in terms of various problems that we are solving, so we, we kind of put them into three major buckets. Most users will start with implementing a tenancy or an isolation model, either based on various teams they have, various environments, uh, various business rules they may have. And then very soon as they mature in their production deployments and their security model, they start implementing what we call as a fine grain access control around their workloads. Uh, so implementing micro segmentation primarily to prevent any kind of lateral movement of breach or malware or any kind of threat uh, activity inside their environments. And then last but not the least, uh, if you're running those production environments, you're going to have to plan for various compliance controls and primarily visibility for your security and compliance teams around how the network is working, how your environments are, are behaving with respect to the controls that you have to deploy. So those are the three major scenarios we offer or we solve for uh, with our customers. Underlying, as Arun and Chris mentioned, we do this as a network policy implementation. And for those of you who are not very familiar with this, think of this just as a like security group concept for your AWS environments, just expanding that to implementing the network security for your Kubernetes pods uh, and uh, non-Kubernetes resources as well. So that's the primary set of problems we saw. With that, I'm going to transition to Karthik, who's actually going to walk us through how to actually do this uh, in his own EKS cluster. Thanks, Summit. And so as you guys uh, start to spin up your nice new EKS clusters, one of the things that you might be wondering about is, so as Kubernetes spins up pods and spins up pods dynamically, which, with each pod getting its a unique IP address, how do you provide network security and how do you lock down your applications within the cluster, right? And so to illustrate that, what we will do is, uh, first of all, this is something that uh, the team at Amazon worked closely with, Amazon Web Services worked closely with Tegera to integrate Calico as part of the EKS uh, solution. And to illustrate this, we, what we will do is we'll be using a little three node EKS cluster here, where we've already deployed a simple microservice application. Which has a management UI with a front end, with a client talking to a front end microservice and the front end talking to a back end microservice. And in the absence of network policy, all of these pods can talk to each other freely. So there is no isolation between any of the instances of the pods. So if you do a to look at the service here,
there's a network load balancer. So if we access the UI for this application, you see these three microservices talking to each other and with full connectivity. Essentially, this management UI is showing full connectivity. So what we're going to now show in the demo is how you can use network policy to lock down the specific pods that need to talk to each other. In this case, we want just the client to talk only to the front end and the front end to talk to the back end and not have the client talk directly to the back end. So the way we would do that is by first doing a default deny so nothing can talk to anything else aside from the management UI to ping the different pods. And then we, we would apply a little policy called the, the client can talk to the front end, which can talk to the back end. which essentially, if you look at what that policy looks like, uh, it simply is, uh, it's something that Kubernetes defines as part of the network policy spec, which in effect, what you're doing is you're matching, uh, in, as part of your deployment, the labels associated with the deployment. In this case, the back end, where you're saying, on ingress, I want to allow traffic from things labeled front end, and to allow that on port 6379. Likewise, for things labeled front end, I want it to allow all traffic from things labeled client on port 80, right? So very simple network policy. And if we go back and look at the application, essentially you've locked it down to saying only the client can talk to the front end and the front end can talk to the back end. Now that's great when you have individual policies for simple applications like this. And as you scale out these applications or Kubernetes scales them out, you get more complexity. But how do you really take care of managing policies at scale? and taking care of day two operations for all of these policies and your clusters. And for this, uh, Tigera has a solution called CNX, which is focused uh, at the enterprise and focused on managing policies and day two operations. And so I'm here, I'm logged into the Tigera CNX um, UI. In this case, I'm logged in as an administrator. And so what I'm seeing here is a global view of policies across the cluster. And in effect, if you actually were to log in as an individual user, because this is access controlled, if you log in as a user with specific credentials belonging to an individual team, essentially the only policies you would see are the policies that belong to you as a user or, or perhaps your team's policies, depending on the permissions you've granted. So all of this is access controlled. But in this case, since I'm logged in as an administrator, I can see all policies across the cluster. And so if you go back and look at this particular policy that we just created, if you notice, I can go a bit, let me make this bigger so you can actually read. Uh, so this is that policy we just created. And in effect, uh, we are getting some real-time stats here. Obviously, it's a very simple application, not much traffic flowing. But you can actually go in and edit policy via the UI. And whether you're using some of the basic policy constructs in Kubernetes network policy, or some of the more advanced features that you get with Calico policy. For example, if I was to change this to a Calico policy and um, use some of the more advanced features, um, I can go in and edit some of these rules. And besides just allowing specific protocols, uh, like TCP or UDP, I have a lot more protocol choices. I have a lot more actions, such as deny actions, logging if I want to do audit logging, uh, passing to the next policy, and so on. But I'm not going to show that right now. And this is all things that you can save directly to your cluster immediately. Or if you prefer to uh, operate in a policy as code framework where you take these policies and manage it with a CI CD system alongside your applications, you can do that too by simply saving this as YAML and running it through your CI CD system as well. Right? So you shouldn't, it's 2018, you shouldn't be editing YAML by hand, really. So all of this gives you sort of basic facilities to to uh, ed edit policies in a nice UI, manage it as code. But going beyond that, if you want to come back and look at what does it mean in terms of how those policies are being used, you want detailed statistics on the traffic flowing through the individual policies. So you can actually go back and analyze real-time stats in terms of traffic flows across your different policies and also be able to set thresholds so that when a certain threshold is exceeded, you then have the uh, you then have dif different actions you can configure. For example, you may want to start logging, or you may want to send alerts to your favorite alerting system. And as an example, I have alerting here that I'm sending to Slack. Um, as an example, where I'm just, when a certain threshold is exceeded, I'm having the policy send an alert to, to Slack. 
And so there's different ways you can automate different security functions as part of your cluster as well. And obviously, you can come back and view this at, at an aggregate view as well to be able to look at different policies, look at you know, uh, what's happening cluster-wide to be able to do traffic analysis. This is all sort of real time. So for example, it's showing me real time, these are the policies which are accepting traffic, this is a policy which is denying traffic, so I might have sort of compliance policies, I might have other policies that provide greater control that I can enforce over my workloads. But in this case, this is all driven off of labels that you've associated with your applications and Kubernetes. So it works natively based on the constructs that Kubernetes provides you and has been tightly integrated uh, uh, with the Tigera team working with the Amazon Web Services team, right? And obviously, you can drill down into different workloads, whether it's running on uh, pods in Kubernetes or host instances, where I can come back and sh get global views and define additional actions. Now, this is just a very superficial walkthrough of some of the features of CNX. There is a lot more powerful capabilities. And so I would invite you all to come talk to Amit or me. We'd be around for the rest of the day or reach out to TechEra and we'd be able to walk you through some of the more advanced and more powerful capabilities that can be tied into this uh, system here. Okay. Amit, so I will hand back to you if you want to just do a quick wrap up I here. was wondering, Karthik, if you can also show that document <clears throat> that talks about how, to sure. get, how these folks can get started with. Yeah, so this is part of the EKS documentation set. So it's something that the teams worked very closely together to integrate uh, out of the box. And so uh, <coughs> as you try this out, this is something that you can leverage uh, very, very simply. Okay. So that said, I'm going to hand back to Amit. And Amit, just want to do a quick wrap up here with next steps. Yeah, I think this is great, uh, Karthik. Thanks for the demo. So really looking forward to working with some of you guys here. Uh, reach out to us if any of this uh, is interesting, something you want to try out or leverage. Uh, we, can, we can talk more about this in details uh, uh, in a subsequent discussion. Thank you, everybody. Thanks. Hope you have a nice morning.